Hi, I'm Nitin Verma. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Haifa. I'm going to talk about our paper, Erasure Resilient Sublinear Time Graph Algorithms. This is joint work with Amit Levy, Ramesh Krishnan S. Pallavur, and Sofia Raskonikova. The main goal of our work is to model and study sublinear time algorithms for graphs that are incomplete. In the setting of sublinear time graph algorithms, the standard assumption is that an algorithm has query or sample access to input graphs. However, this assumption does not accurately reflect reality in some situations. For example, consider the case of a social network as represented here in a picture by a graph where vertices are users and edges between vertices denoting the friendships between users. Now, some of the users might decide to hide their friendship for privacy reasons. And an analyst accessing this graph will not see such edges. We call such edges as being erased from the graph. We consider representations of such incomplete or partially raised graphs as adjacency lists with some missing entries, denoted in this picture by a special symbol perp, as you can see here. Specifically, for a fraction alpha less than one, a graph is alpha erased at most an alpha fraction of entries in the adjacency lists is adversarially erased. A completion of such a partially erased graph is a valid graph that is obtained by filling in the erased entries. Our model is an adaptation to the case of graphs of the erasure resilient model defined by Dixit et al and they defined it for testing properties of functions. An erasure resilient graph algorithm uh, gets a parameter alpha which denotes an upper bound on the fraction of erased entries and also gets query access to an alpha erased graph. One of the kind of queries it can make is that of a degree query where uh, the algorithm can ask for the degree of a vertex. We assume that the labels of vertices in an n vertex graph are uh, from 1 through n. So the algorithm can specify one of these numbers and get the degree of the vertex specified by that label. The second kind of query is called a neighbor query. It is specified by a vertex v and an integer i. The vertex v has degree at least i, then the answer to the query is the ith entry in the adjacency list of v, which may as well be an erased entry. In case the degree of v is less than i, then the algorithm receives a special symbol. The performance, be it running time or query complexity, of an erasure resilient algorithm is measured in the worst case over all alpha erased graphs. I want to emphasize that these erasures are made by an adversary and the erasures are all made before the algorithm starts querying. In our model, we study two kinds of computational tasks. The first one involves testing graph properties. This field of study was initiated by Goldreich et al, where they considered graphs represented by adjacency matrices. Later, Goldreich and Ron studied testing graph properties in the adjacency lists representation, where graphs uh, are assumed to have a bounded degree. Concurrently, Parnas and Ron studied uh, in what we call the general graph model where graphs are represented by adjacency lists without any bound on the degree. Our model is a generalization of this general graph model by Purnas and Ron. Testing in the general graph model 
has been investigated quite a lot. And these are some of the major works in that area. The other task we consider is that of estimating a graph parameter in sublinear time. This is also a well studied area, and there are sublinear time algorithms to estimate number of connected components, degree moments, and so on. Next, I will describe the specific problems that we study and also give an overview of our results. The first problem we study is erasure resilient testing property of connectedness. Here, an algorithm called an erasure resilient tester is given parameters alpha and epsilon as inputs and also oracle access to an alpha erased graph g the tester has to accept with probability at least two-thirds if there exists a completion of the graph g uh, which is connected and the tester has to reject with probability at least two-thirds if at least epsilon times m edges need to be added to every completion of g so that it is connected we say that uh, such a graph is epsilon far from connected graphs falling in this orange region and we refer to epsilon as the proximity parameter in the rest of the talk this problem statement that we described here can be generalized to any property and not just for connectedness for the purposes of this talk uh, i will focus on connectedness Testing connectedness has been studied for graphs with no erasures. And there, the prior best tester, uh, best epsilon tester for proximity parameter epsilon uh, has query complexity 1 over epsilon d the whole square, where d bar denotes the average degree. We study erasure resilient testing of connectedness and show the following surprisingly when the fraction of erasures alpha is larger than the proximity parameter epsilon uh, one needs linearly many queries in the number of vertices this is in contrast with the upper bound on the query complexity uh, that has no dependence on the input size when there are no erasures i would like to mention that the graphs used in our lower bound construction are very sparse and that this query lower bound we obtain is also really linear in the number of edges uh, for those graphs. When alpha is smaller than epsilon, we obtain testers whose complexity is independent of the size of the input, just as in the case of no erasures. We further show that when alpha is even smaller, that is at most epsilon over 2, uh, we can obtain further improvement uh, in the query complexity. To summarize, we observe a phase transition in the complexity of connectedness testing when the fraction of erasures alpha is at least epsilon versus the case when alpha is smaller than epsilon. In one case, the complexity is linear uh, in the size of the input representation and in the latter case, it is independent of the size of the input graph. In the special case of uh, graphs containing no erasures, the complexity of our tester is better than the complexity of the prior best tester. In a recent unpublished work, we observe that our upper bound is tight. The second problem we study is that of estimating the average degree of a partially erased graph. In the special case of graphs with no erased entries, this problem has been studied by Feige, Goldreich, Ron, and Eden et al. Feige showed that one can get a 2 plus epsilon approximation for the average degree of a graph by making only root 10 over epsilon degree queries. This is an interesting result since 
for an arbitrary list of n numbers with values ranging from 1 through n minus 1, it is not possible to obtain in sublinear time uh, a good estimate for the average. Pege also showed that using just degree queries, it is impossible to get anything better, any, any better approximation guarantee in sublinear time. In a subsequent uh, line of work, Goldreich and Ron and Eden et al. improved state of the art and obtained 1 plus epsilon factor approximation algorithms, uh, making big O of Rutten degree and neighbor queries. Specifically, these algorithms only require access to uniformly random neighbors of specified vertices. We design algorithms and prove lower bounds for estimating the average degree of partially erased graphs. In particular, we give a square root n query algorithm with approximation ratio 1 plus epsilon plus 2 alpha when the fraction of erasures alpha is less than half. Additionally, we show that this term of alpha in the approximation guarantee is essential by showing a linear query lower bound for approximating to within a factor of 1 plus gamma, where gamma is smaller than alpha. Our result can be seen as unifying the model with only degree queries, as studied by Feige, and the model with both degree and neighbor queries, as considered in the later works. Specifically, when alpha is equal to 0, there are no erasures, and we obtain a 1 plus epsilon approximation in big O of root and queries. When alpha increases from 0 to half or to 1, um, it can be seen as, as progressively losing access to some of the neighbor queries and inching towards the model with only degree queries. In the rest of the talk, I will give a high level picture of our improved connectedness tester and its correctness analysis. For simplicity, I will consider the special case that alpha is equal to zero or the case of no erasures. Just to recall, the problem is the following. The tester gets inputs epsilon, the proximity parameter, um, and the bar, the average degree. It gets query access to a graph G on N vertices and M edges. The tester has to accept with probability two-thirds if G is connected and has to reject with probability two-thirds if G is epsilon far from connected, where by epsilon far I mean at least epsilon M edges need to be added to G to make it connected. The basic uh, algorithmic idea of Goldreich and Ron for this problem to solve this problem is as follows. Basically, design a tester that rejects only upon finding some witness to G being not connected. That is, reject only if we detect a small connected component. They observed that if G, the graph, is epsilon far from connected, then it has many connected components. And the testing idea is to detect some such component by running uh, breadth-first searches from uniformly random vertices. We focus on graphs that are far from connected and make a few more observations that will help us in designing our tester more concretely. So here I've just written the earlier observation by Goldreich and Ron. Um, the next observation is that it is impossible for many connected components to have a lot of vertices each. That is, there cannot be too many large connected components. Goldreich and Ron call a connected component small if it has at most uh, 2n over epsilon m vertices and show that a graph that is far from connected has to have at least epsilon m over two small connected components. Um, we denote in the rest of this talk this quantity 2n over epsilon m um, as b, the symbol b, 
and use the term size of a component to indicate the number of vertices in that component. The next idea is to partition as a mental experiment these small connected components into log b buckets based on their sizes in a geometrically increasing manner. And the next idea is a work investment strategy by Berman et al. To make things clear, uh, the result of Berman et al. implies that given such a bucketing of small connected components, if we iterate over i from 1 through log b and sample b over 2 to the i uniformly random vertices from the graph, with high probability, there exists some iteration in which some vertex from that it, some vertex sampled in that iteration falls into the ith bucket. And this might help us to detect hmm, a small component belonging to that bucket. And using these ideas, uh, we now describe the prior best connectedness tester. The tester gets inputs epsilon and d bar and has query access to graph with average degree d bar. The algorithm really looks like the work in the investment strategy. Uh, we iterate over um, i from 1 through log b, and in the ith iteration, we sample b over 2 to the i uniformly random vertices and run BFSs from each such vertex uh, until either a small component is found, in which case we reject because we have found uh, evidence to the graph being not connected, or either a pre-specified uh, query budget is exhausted. Here the query budget is set uh, to 2 to the 2i neighbor queries, which is really the number of queries sufficient to explore a small connected component uh, in the ith bucket and recall that a small connected component in the ith bucket has at most uh, 2 to the i vertices and can have only at most 2 to the 2i edges. This tester never rejects graphs that are connected. If a graph is epsilon far from connected by the work investment strategy, uh, with high probability, uh, there exists an iteration i in which the sampled vertex falls in the ith bucket, and in that case, the algorithm will detect a small connected component because our query budget is sufficient to fully explore that small component uh, and the algorithm can reject. Now, here is our connectedness tester. What we do is to simply replace the query budget in the ith iteration uh, from 2 to the 2i to something else. Specifically, uh, we replace it with the degree of the sampled vertex times 2 to the i, where 2 to the i denotes the size of the connected component that we hope to see in the ith iteration. To argue that our tester is correct, we only need to show why this query budget is sufficient to fully explore a small connected component. The intuition is that the expected query budget that we allot is equal to the number of edges in that component where the expectation is over the vertices in the connected component. Essentially, we are replacing the worst case bound of 2 to the 2i on the number of edges with some average case bound. And the rest of the correctness argument will follow as before by applying the work investment strategy that with high probability we will fall into, uh, the, with high probability the i, there exists an i such that in the ith iteration we fall into the ith bucket and we will detect a small component. The expected query complexity of our tester can also be worked out to be the desired expression by uh, uh, simplification. 
Here is the final upper bound that we obtain in our paper. Our final tester runs either the prior known best tester with complexity one over epsilon d bar square, uh, or the tester that I described just now. And the choice is made based on the relative values of the average degree d bar and the proximity parameter epsilon. The complexity of this final tester is better than the prior known best bound when the average degree is smaller than square root 1 over epsilon. This is interesting because uh, large graphs uh, of interest often are sparse and have low average degree, and this improvement might help uh, in such scenarios. So far, I described the connectedness tester for the special case of graphs without erasures. When the fraction of erasures alpha is small, we show that there are several small erasure-free connected components, and the same strategy we described works. However, when alpha is at least epsilon over 2, there need not be any connected component without erasures, and we cannot apply the earlier strategy. In this case, we redefine our witness to not being connected uh, to be subgraphs, some special subgraphs that form a unique connected component in every completion of the input. And we observe uh, details in our paper. Uh, we observe that we cannot apply the work investment strategy with these kind of witnesses, uh, and thereby we obtain a larger query complexity. Our work raises several open problems. One immediate question arising from the connectedness testing result is whether the secondary phase transition in the complexity of testing at alpha is equal to epsilon over 2 is inherent. In the second question concerns monotone properties. A graph property is monotone if it is preserved under deletion of edges and vertices. Many important graph properties are monotone. For bounded degree graphs represented by their adjacency lists, we observe that erasure resilience can be obtained at a factor, uh, at a cost of square, square of degree bound in the query complexity. It is interesting to study the cost of obtaining erasure resilience for monotone properties uh, of general graphs. The next question is a modeling question. Our model is quite general in that uh, an entry V can be erased from the adjacency list of a vertex U, but this entry U can still be present in the adjacency list of the vertex V. Uh, one can call such erasures as asymmetric. We ask whether testing becomes easier if one assumes that erasures are always made in pairs or in some sense symmetrically. That is, if V is erased from the list of U, then U is also erased from the list of V. Is such a model mm, of any help in improving the complexity? Another question uh, concerns the relative power of the tolerant and erasure resilient testing models. Uh, for delta parameters delta less than epsilon, a delta epsilon tolerant tester aims to distinguish between graphs that are delta close to satisfying a property. That is, uh, these graphs can be made to satisfy the property by changing at most delta m edges. And to distinguish such graphs from those that are epsilon far from satisfying the property. Dikshit et al. observed the tolerant tester uh, for a function property can be converted to an erasure resilient tester for the same property. Their argument is that a tolerant tester can be run on a partially erased function as is, and whenever an erased point is queried, this can be replaced by an arbitrary value. But replacing erasures with arbitrary values does not work if the input is an adjacency list representation. 
So their argument does not work for the case of graphs. It will be really interesting to figure out the exact relationship between erasure resilient and tolerant models of testing properties of graphs. I would like to thank you for your time and for listening to me. Thank you.